Since the beginning of time, God has been pursuing mankind. His pursuit is steadfast and unwavering. His love is resolute and unmatched. From the moment of our first breath, we have all been searching for hope. In every human heart, there is a longing for true purpose and meaning. There is a sense that we were meant for more. Our city is filled with people searching for truth, searching for answers. These answers can't be found in quick fixes, self-help books, or our limited ability to understand the meaning of life. Eternity is within us. The kingdom of God isn't a place, it's a people who are pursued by their creator and are found in the midst of their searching. You see, where the pursuit of God and the searching of mankind collide, there is Jesus. The bridge to the one true God, Jesus. The beginning and the end, Jesus. The perfect example of perfect love, Jesus. The one who loves us in spite of our failures, takes our worst and gives us his best, Jesus. The way, the truth, and the life, the one who broke the chains of our sin, the one who has the power to heal and restore, the one who defeated death and rose victorious on the third day, Jesus. No other name is higher, no other name is greater, no other name than the one we celebrate today, Jesus. Hello everyone, good morning. How are you this morning? Nice to be in your homes. It's a good Friday and we'll see more about it in the in the service ahead and but I hope you all are fine and nice to be in your homes and together let's worship the Lord but before we do that let Pastor Sylvia greet you and pray for this morning. Good morning church it's nice to have come into your homes I believe that all of you all are there listening to this message or to this good Friday service 
we believe that this is a beautiful day that the lord has given in our lives mm -hmm. and we believe that god's presence is there in our midst whatever we are going through we know that we have a god who will never leave us and who will never forsake us come let's open the service in prayer father in heaven we come to you in jesus name lord lord you so loved the world that you gave your only begotten son that whosoever believes in you will not perish but have everlasting life lord this day even as we remember what you did on the cross of calvary lord we are so grateful oh god that you died for us lord you became sin who knew no sin that we might become the righteousness of god lord we thank you that we are made righteous in your presence lord only because of the blood of jesus lord that is shed for our lives lord this morning lord we commit this service into your holy hands lord we ask you that you would lead us guide us lord even as we hear the worship and listen to the word lord we pray of oh, our father lord that our inner man would be nourished oh father lord help us to have a blessed time oh god in your presence because your word says in your presence is fullness of joy and at your right hand are pleasures forevermore lord we want to be filled with your presence oh master lord we need you more in our lives lord you lead us you guide us lord in the power of your holy spirit lord we thank you we give you all the glory honor and praise in jesus name we pray amen, amen. come let's have a time of worship over to joshua and team and let's have a blessed time worshiping the lord amen good morning church we hope you guys are doing well and it's a joy for us to worship with you together as we are on good friday today and we are celebrating our lord and savior jesus christ and I hope you guys will join us to watch it.
Praise the Lord. <clears throat> As we're worshiping the Lord, uh, I sense in my spirit the Lord uh, speaking to us this morning in a very specific way. I believe in the midst of the fiery storm, in the midst of the trial and testing that we are going through, this is what the Lord is impressing. This is Lord, what the Lord is saying to me. And I sense very strongly that this is where we as the people of God, we as the children of the Most High God should be doing. We need to understand that uh, in the midst of uh, the current uh, uh, pandemic that is uh, spread across the globe, uh, you know what's happening, the media, the people around, everything that is happening around is, is glorifying or is talking so much about that uh, virus. But I sense very strongly this morning uh, that the Lord asking us, and if you turn your Bibles or if you just listen to what I'm saying through the word, Psalm 34 verse 3 says, Come, let us tell of the Lord's greatness. Let us exalt his name together. I sense very strongly in my spirit, the Lord is asking us to talk about his greatness. And this is the day when the Lord is, uh, Lord died for us and the world is remembering on this Good Friday morning about his coming, his, uh, his uh, being crucified on the cross. And this is the time that you and I need to be bold. You and I need to be talking more about his greatness rather than talking about the greatness of that little virus which has uh, put the whole world to ransom. I am telling you that if we learn to magnify our Lord, if we learn to exalt his name, and if we learn to bring up his name and lift his name higher than talking about the effects of the of the virus or what it's done and how it's done, rather than talking about the negativity about, about his greatness and how many are dead and how many are there, it's time that we as the children of the Most High God magnify the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the Great I Am. We start exalting the name of Jesus. And what better day than this day when the whole world is remembering on of this good friday and truly it's been a good friday had it not been for the lord's sacrifice on the cross we could not have experienced salvation for anybody who's ready to believe the word of god says they will experience salvation and we need to be great uh, talking about the greatness of our lord rather than talking about the greatness of our problems or the situation that we are in most of us land up somewhere or the other during the day even as we as believers have failed in this area and we need to be careful and i'm telling this not only we as believers but the everyone around us we need to understand that we need to stop magnifying a problem but we need to magnify our god because he is worthy of our glory he's the one who's taken it all on our behalf he's taken all the stripes on his back he's taken it all on himself he's taken gone through the worst of worst so that you and i can experience deliverance you and i can experience freedom you and i can come out of it victorious let's stop magnifying the name of this virus let's stop magnifying the name of this pandemic which has set the world on its knees but it's time that we start talking about the greatness of our god who's above and everything who can in a twinkling of a moment put this virus to finish just that it came from nowhere it can go to nowhere it can happen in a moment but church you and i need to start talking of the greatness of our god what better day than to this day to start it off glorify about him talk about his greatness talk about his miracle working power and there's nothing greater than that and even as we magnify his name even as we declare that he's working i can tell you that he'll start he's working behind the scenes he's answering our prayer even as we are crying week after week day after day persisting in prayer glorifying him worshiping him and let me tell you, he's working behind the scenes on our behalf 
and his word is that there is a promise for us in every circumstance that when we learn to magnify the Lord above our situation he will be, he will become bigger in our lives you want to see God's bigness in your lives talk talking about God's bigness his greatness his verse clearly says okay come let us tell of the Lord's greatness let us exalt his name together there's nothing beyond that and this morning even as a worshiping we exalted his name and I'm telling you church let's exalt him let's give him the glory let's send the songs of worship into his throne room during your day during your time this is what the Lord is saying if we his people just learn to understand and talk about the greatness of a God rather than talking about the greatness of that virus and discussing about the virus this thing will pass like this let's put that into action we have nothing to lose but we have got everything to gain because when we glorify the king of kings when we worship him when we do it unceasingly on a regular basis we are going to see his glory come we are going to see his power in his mind if you believe that say a loud amen sitting at your home say a loud amen believe it declare it and stop discussing stop forwarding stop uh, talking about and glorifying the enemy but let's glorify the name of the king of kings the lord of lords the great i am the great lord jesus whom whose uh, death we are remembering this morning even as he took it all on our behalf on the cross of calvary let's glorify the name of jesus let's exalt his name in jesus name i pray amen and i'm believing that this is the word for all of us take it strongly church believe it stop talking the greatness of that virus but stop only about the greatness of our Lord. even as we do that we'll see a miracle happen we'll see this thing suddenly come to a death it'll no more have life and it will stop being active this lockdown will be lifted up we will see greater and beautiful days ahead are you looking forward because i believe this is a promise from the lord this morning for all of us to believe just say amen and believe and trust don't forget it many a time we hear such things when the word comes when encouragement comes we hear it but we forget it next second so keep keep remember reminding yourself keep remembering yourself anyone gets into it we are common we tend to get carried away with the news and whatsapp social media it's our duty to say no no there's nothing greater than my god i believe my god is about this about this and this too shall pass in jesus name amen amen now uh, every good friday when we can meet together as a corporate family uh, we usually would spend this time uh, not to remember what because we know the lord all those who have been born again know what the lord did for you and me we don't need a good friday to remember him specially every time we break bread every time we take communion we remember his great sacrifice for us this morning uh, uh, so every time we uh, join for our good friday what we do is we just come together as a family of God and we, we pray together, we intercede together, not only for ourselves, but for our families, for the nation, for everything that is around us. And we thought this morning we need to intercede. Now being uh, on social media, it's challenging to ask many of you to join us, but you can pray together with the two, uh, two uh, people who are going to lead us this morning. Uh, you can join them and even as they lead us, you just unite yourself and don't move around, don't go for a coffee, don't get distracted, but be focused. Let's unite our hearts as a family of God and sitting in your, uh, your living room or wherever you're sitting, let's hold hands and let's together believe. If you're alone, just believe the Holy Spirit of God is with you and together let's unite our hearts in one spirit, one mind, one accord and let's get connected to the throne room of God and let believe that our prayers will be heard. I'd like to welcome our sister Kritika to lead and then after that, Brother Joseph will be coming in. Good morning PHM family and all those who are watching us live this morning. What a beautiful day it is, a holy day. Holy because of the sacrifice that Lord Jesus made for you and me. Today is the day when light conquered darkness and goodness conquered sin. Let us not forget this sacrifice but instead keep our eyes focused on the cross where our Lord was crucified. We all are the children of the Most High God, covered by His precious blood. God loved you and me. John 3.16 says, For God so loved us that He sent His only begotten Son. So right now, let us all come together as a body of Christ and confess our sins in one spirit and one truth. 
His mercies are new every morning. Father Lord, we come before your throne room, Father, as a corporate body of Christ. We come to your footstool, Father God, and we storm heavens in the mighty name of Jesus during this time of crisis. Right now, we take authority and we command the spirit of COVID-19 to leave in the mighty name of Jesus. We rebuke it, Lord. Father, we commit our city of Mumbai, our state of Maharashtra, our nation of India. We commit this at your footstool, Father God. We commit all the nations of the world. We cover all of us with your precious blood. Father, we know when two or three are gathered in your presence, whatever we ask in your name is answered by you, Father God. Yes, Lord, we lift up the healthcare workers, Father God, who are working selflessly on the front line. Give them the peace and your healing touch, Father God. We cover all the people who are in quarantine and all those who have been tested positive. Your healing touch upon them, Father. We submit the authorities who have to take important decisions, Father God. Let your wisdom reign in them. Yes, Lord, right now, we pray for the government of India to take the right decisions, Father God. Even as we are nearing the lockdown phase, Father God, we believe your wisdom will reign over them. Father, we commit all these petitions into your hands, Father God. We lift up the PHM family, and all our loved ones, Father God. And we speak your blood covering, your hedge of protection, your ring of fire around us, Father. Father, we know you are a miracle worker, a way maker, a, a promise keeper, Father. You are a prayer answering God. We lift and we bring all these petitions into your kingdom. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, uh, Sister Kritika. And uh, before I pray, I just wanted to read a verse from the scripture. I want to read from John chapter 19, verse 30, which is uh, one of the sayings of the Lord Jesus when he was on the cross. Uh, the Lord Jesus spoke seven different words on the cross, and this is a very significant word from verse 30. I'm going to read that for us here. Uh, it says here, so when Jesus had received the sore wine, he said, it is finished. And bowing his head, he gave up his spirit. Now, this scripture that we just read talks about what Jesus pronounced and spoke to the Father, saying, It is finished. The Greek word for the it is finished sentence is just one word, which is tetelestai. Now, tetelestai is typically a word that Greek servants used to say when they finished a work and report back to their master. So Jesus reported back to God the Father, his master, saying, it is finished. The purpose for which you sent me here to earth is finished. The work that you have given me here is finished. So what is it that he finished? He finished Restoring the glory of God back to man. Romans chapter 3 verse 23 says, For all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And in John chapter 17, when the Lord Jesus was praying in the garden of Gethsemane, he says, The glory that I have, you have given me, Lord, I give it to them. So he restored that relationship back to the Father. He also broke the dominion that sin can have over us. The consequences of sin are sickness, shame, sorrow, suffering. So the Lord Jesus broke that dominion as well. Romans chapter 6 verse 23 says, For the wages of sin are death. So today we are not under that curse. Even creation has been redeemed, as it says in Colossians chapter 1 because of the death and resurrection of Jesus on the cross. So we stand here today in that place of victory, 
because of the finished work of Christ on the cross. And when he declared that it is finished, our creation is redeemed. The dominion of sin on our lives is broken. The curse is broken. As well as we have been restored back into a place of glory in Christ Jesus, in the heavenly realms with the Father. Something that we could not have achieved on our own. Isn't that amazing? As we get into his presence and pray and ask the Lord for intervention in our lives, I just want us to go into that presence with that assurance that we are standing in the presence of God because of the finished work of Christ. Because Christ said it is finished. It is finished because he did it on the cross. He died for us and he rose again. And he has given salvation to us. And for those of us who do not know Jesus as our personal Savior, I think it's important for us to accept him as our personal Savior because there's nobody else who can take us into heaven without us doing anything. We don't need to do any penance. We don't need to do anything at all. It's a free gift of salvation. Can we just pray? And we're also going to pray for this COVID situation because even the dominion of COVID has been broken by Jesus at the cross. No sickness has got any authority over us. It is finished. Let's pray. Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus. Precious Lord, we pray and ask you that the blessings of the finished work of Jesus, Lord Father God, would be there with us, Lord, to experience. To, would be there with us to partake, Lord Father God, to be partakers of the glory, Lord Father. And for the praise of your glory, Lord Father God, would you step into our lives, Lord Father God, and do amazing things, Lord Father, which our minds cannot comprehend, Lord Father God, which our hearts cannot understand, Lord. The mysteries of your kingdom, Lord Father God, where we see, Lord Father, your amazing wonders, Lord Father. Sicknesses being healed, Lord. Sorrows being rolled away, O oh Master God. Sadness being removed. Hallelujah, Lord Father God. The shame of our past being taken away and a new honor being bestowed over us, Lord Father. Sicknesses like COVID, we know, Lord Father God, they do not have a dominion over us. Father, you have made this world, you have created this universe. And Lord, through the death of your son, Jesus, Lord, a sacrifice was performed on the cross. Lord, we do not need to do any more sacrifices. We do not need to make any more payments, Lord. We do not need to make any more penances, Lord Father. We do not need to burn any more candles, Lord Father. We do not need to walk any more pilgrimages, Lord Father. We do not need to go and wash ourselves in any rivers, oh Lord Father God. Lord Father, a free gift has been given to us which is free to us, but it was costly for you. With your son being sacrificed, his blood being shed, his body being brutally beaten up, his face being smitten, slapped, the, thorn of, the crown of thorns on his head, making his blood drip on his face, disfigured body. Lord, that sacrificial lamb, Lord Father God, that you have sacrificed on that cross, Lord Father God, is enough. That's enough, Lord Father God. You do not need any other sacrifice because that's the most costliest sacrifice that you have paid for us. And because of that sacrifice, Lord Father, we sinners can come into your presence and we can enjoy your goodness, Lord Father. Every good gift belongs to the Lord and Lord. We thank you for that and we accept it, Lord. The good gift of health, the good gift of financial blessings, the good gift of marital blessings, the good gift of peace in the family, the good gift of peace in our cities, Lord Father God. We accept that as part of your plan for an abundant life. Lord, we thank you for your word which says, Lord, in John chapter 10, verse 10, the thief comes to steal, kill, and to destroy. But I have come to give you life and life in abundance. Lord, we do not lose when we are in your presence, but we only gain, Lord Father God. We thank you for this. And for those of them, Lord Father, today who have understood 
the truth of the cross and who have committed their lives to you and who have accepted Jesus Christ as their personal savior, who have accepted Jesus Christ as the way to salvation and the way to heaven, Lord. I pray that you would bless them, Lord Father, with an abundance of your presence through the presence of your Holy Spirit so that they can see the riches of your glory, O Lord, Father God. Hallelujah. We pray, Lord, in all of this, Lord, your name would be glorified, Lord Father. Your kingdom, Lord Father, would come into our lives on earth, Lord. Lord, because of that sacrifice on the cross, because you have given us the name of Jesus and the authority to call on his name and to take his name and to speak to every defeated evil force, we take authority in the name of Jesus this time and speak against this coronavirus. And we command it to leave from our planet. And we speak in the name of Jesus through the finished work. We speak the blessing of good health and healing into the lives of all who are suffering. And we plead the blood of Jesus Christ upon us. So that when the devil sees that blood, the devil would flee. And none of us, none of us, none of our family members would be touched by this dirty, filthy virus. We thank you, Lord, Father, for that painful sacrifice which was so costly for you, yet so free for us. We thank you for this. We don't deserve it, but you've given it to us, Lord Father, and help us, Lord, through your Holy Spirit, to live lives which are worthy, Lord Father God, of that cost that you paid, the price that you paid, O oh Lord. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. 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 And we say amen to that prayers that were made this morning. And we believe God is, uh, uh, God is uh, answering our prayers. And even as the prayers of the saints go up, and I believe that there is a, there's always an answer. He never says no. We need to continue to persist in prayer. Sometimes God's delay is not his denial. But we as, I believe that every prayer that's gone up to his throne room this morning has been heard in Jesus' name. Let's tune our hearts now for the word of God. Okay, I've got a special word this morning. And I want to bring this word to you. Uh, everybody knows that this is uh, 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 Good Friday. Now, why is it Good Friday? It's good because the Lord Jesus, the Son of the Most High God, came down to this world, took a human form, lived his life, 30 years of his life, and 33 years, three years of his life, he served for the kingdom. And finally, he became an ultimate sacrifice on your behalf, my behalf for anybody who's ready to believe on him. And he became a sacrifice and he died a horrific death on the cross. And this Good Friday day, the world across, including us, are remembering that great sacrifice of our Lord Jesus. Jesus came for our sins, for the sins of the world, for anybody who's ready to believe. He was there to change their lives forever. So Good Friday reminds us of the great sacrifice of the Lord and his crucifixion that took place he became a lamb a sinless lamb on our behalf and became a total sacrifice which could be uh, like a worship in the throne room of God on behalf of our sins that we would do today 2000 years back the story is there we just quickly look in the word and then I'm going to just uh, take you through a quick short word this morning so that we are blessed okay if you turn your Bibles to Matthew chapter 27 verse 32 to uh, 50 okay we're going to quickly read this so that there's a gist especially on behalf of the ones who have never heard the gospel about him or about what it what his life is all about okay what happened to him on this special day okay so along the way they came across a man named Simon who was from Syrian and the soldiers forced him to carry Jesus cross and they went out to a place called Golgotha which means place of the skull the soldiers gave him wine mixed with bitter gall but when he had tasted it, he refused to drink it. After they had nailed him to the cross, the soldiers gambled for his clothes by throwing dice. Then they sat around and kept guard as he hung there. A sign was fastened about Jesus' head announcing the charge against him. It read, This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. Two revolutionaries were crucified with him. One was on his right and one was on his left. The people passing by shouted abuse, shaking their heads in mockery. Look at you now. They yelled at him. You said you were going to destroy the temple and rebuild in three days. 
Well, then, if you are the son of God, save yourself and come down from the cross. The leading priests, the teachers of religious law and the elders also mocked Jesus. He saved others, they scoffed, but he can't save himself. So he is the king of Israel. Is he? Let him come down from the cross right now and we will believe in him. He trusted God, so let God rescue him now if he wants him. For he said, I am the son of God. Even the revolutionaries who were crucified with him ridiculed him in the same way. At noon, darkness fell across the whole land until three o'clock. At about three o'clock, Jesus called out with a loud voice, Eli, Eli, Lema, Sabathani, which means, my God, my God, why have you abandoned me? Some of the bystanders misunderstood and thought he was calling for the prophet Elijah. One of them ran and filled a sponge with sour wine, holding it up to him on a reed stick so he could drink. But the rest said, wait, let's see whether Elijah comes to save him. Then Jesus shouted out again and he released his spirit. Amen. Let's say bow our heads and just close our eyes. And I pray that the spirit of God will speak to us. Even as we look into this word, I believe the spirit of God is going to minister to us. Using me as his vessel, using me as his donkey. But bringing forth what he wants us to hear this morning. Lord, we surrender ourselves and we look up to you with eyes of expectancy. Minister to us in a special way. Encourage us, Lord, and strengthen our faith in you so that we be what you want us to be. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Uh, this morning, I, uh, as we read the scripture, we saw about what Jesus went through. Okay, he was nailed to the cross and he took a horrific uh, death there on your behalf and my behalf and for anybody who's ready to believe. I want to tell you that there is no Easter Sunday without Good Friday. This is what I'm going to topic, uh, going to touch on. No Easter Sunday without Good Friday. There would have been no Easter Sunday had it been no Good Friday. We needed a Good Friday like this to go into Easter Sunday. Because the word of God says he died and he rose again. On Easter Sunday is the day of resurrection where we see the coming of the Lord back into life, back into the world. Okay, now I've got three areas that I want to touch on this topic this morning. And I want to give credits to uh, the man of God whom I was uh, reading his meditation on this particular thing. And I got encouraged and I picked up his uh, few points here in this. So I want to give him due credit. Uh, Brother Ray Hola. Uh, okay, and uh, I just want to give him the credits that is there. And uh, I was reading his uh, devotion and I was blessed. Friday, number one area that I want to talk is Friday is the road to Sunday. Friday is the road to Sunday. Okay, without Friday coming in, you can't reach Sunday. Even a normal week, you cannot get it unless you go through Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Now, Bible scholars uh, 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 talk about uh, a little controversy about whether it was Friday or Thursday. They say if it was three days uh, he rose on the third day. It couldn't have been Friday. It should have been Thursday. Some even say Wednesday. But I don't want to get into that. I know for sure my Lord died. He took a horrific death on behalf of my sin, your sin, the sins of the world. And he did die and he was buried. And he came out alive again on Sunday, the resurrection day. So, but we all have to go through a Friday to reach Sunday. Okay. We remember the crucifixion of Jesus on this Friday. But after this Friday comes Sunday and we know that Sunday is soon coming. So even though this moment could be a temporary break kind of a thing and where we don't know what's happening, why it's happening. But let me tell you that that's how it is after Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Sunday is coming. Whether you like it or not, Sunday is coming. Resurrection day is coming. Day of hope is coming. Day where we'll see every darkness go and brightness come. Same with the scenario in the, in the, in the world today. We have been buried in, in darkness. We have been buried in a gloom. We don't know what's going to happen. We don't know what's tomorrow. But I want you to bring your hope on this Good Friday day. Just like the Lord went through darkness. He went through death. He went through the most uh, difficult part of life. But he came out on the third day. There is hope. So I want to tell you this morning that after Friday, Sunday will surely come. I want to tell you, out of all that is happening around us, we are going to see a resurrection day. We are going to see a beautiful day ahead. It's just a matter of time. It's just a few days. Just a matter of a few days. And trust me, 
they're going to come out of all that is happening around us. God is just taking us through it to prepare us, to make us strong, to walk our life with him. Okay, there's no resurrection without the cross. We all need to know there is no resurrection without the cross. Every one of us has to, to go to understand what the cross is all about. Okay, the cross is the place where everything took place. Cross is the place where Jesus died for our sins. Cross is the place that you and I as believers have to face. There is a cross that we all need to carry our own cross. Jesus' cross, he couldn't carry. Someone came to help him. They asked him, but he was in real, real brokenness. If you look, we read the scripture just now. Okay. But in the same way, we all have to carry a cross. We have someone, Jesus, to help us. But let me tell you, our cross we have to face. We all have to face. John 12, 24 says, unless a grain of wheat falls into the ground and dies. Okay. John 12, 24 says, Unless a grain of wheat falls into the ground and dies, it cannot multiply and come out. Similarly, we all have areas where we have situations where we die. Die to ourselves, die to our situation, die to our surrounding, die to our dreams. But let me tell you, out of every death on the cross, every death that we go through, there is something that comes out. There's a resurrection power that comes out with a blessing, with a blessing beyond our understanding. So we all are being prepared for that. So that's my first point. Friday is the road to Sunday. Okay, there is hope ahead. There is not, we are not to give up. We are not to be disheartened. But that cross that we are bearing, God will take us through it. Out of the pain, there will be gain. Out of the trial and the testing that we are going through, there is something beautiful that's been made prepared for us. We may go into darkness. We may go into the depth of the earth, but let me tell you, out of that, there's something that's going to bloom fresh in our lives. Okay, the second area that I want to talk about is everyone has a problem with the cross. Everyone, you talk to everyone, you talk to a, uh, to a believer, he has challenges about carrying his cross or about his problems. You see him grumbling, murmuring, complaining. You go to the world outside, they have a problem. Not only that, if you read uh, 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 1 verses 8, uh, 18 to 30, it talks about the wisdom of God. Okay, it talks about how, uh, uh, let's read it. I think we, we need to read it to understand it. Okay, so if you turn your Bibles to 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 1 verses 18 to 30. Let's quickly read it so you get the understanding of the message of what's happening there. Okay, it says, the message of the cross is foolish to those who are headed for destruction. But we who are being saved know it is the very power of God, as the scripture says. I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and discard the intelligence of the intelligent. So where does this leave the philosophers, the scholars and the world's brilliant debaters? God has made the wisdom of this world look foolish. Since God in his wisdom saw to it that the world would never know him through human wisdom, he has used a foolish preaching to save those who believe. It is foolish to the Jews who ask for signs from heaven. And it is foolish to the Greeks who seek human wisdom. So when we preach that Christ was crucified, the Jews are offended and the Gentiles say it's all nonsense. But to those called by God to salvation, both Jews and Gentiles, Christ is the power of God and the wisdom of God. This foolish plan of God is wiser than the wisest of human plans and God's weakness is stronger than the greatest of human strength. Remember, dear brothers and sisters, that few of you were wise in the world's eyes or powerful or wealthy when God called you instead God chose things the world considers foolish in order to shame those who think they are wise and he chose those things that are powerless to shame those who are powerful God chose things despised by the world things counted as nothing at all and used them to bring to nothing what the world considers important as a result no one can ever boast in the presence of God God has united you with Christ Jesus for our benefit, God made him to be wisdom itself. Christ made us right with God. He made us pure and holy and he freed us from sin. Therefore, as the scripture says, if you want to boast, boast only about the Lord. Amen. Uh, if you look here in these scriptures, all through you can see that the world around us denies it. People around us mock at us, fun, make fun of us. They say no, they were thinking their wisdom is more powerful. They were thinking the wealth and the riches more than everything around them but that's not important let me tell you even we as believers get into this trap many a times 
uh, we think uh, the there are always dark uh, there's always a darkness before we go into pitch darkness it always starts we always have a problem but the small problem becomes into a bigger problem before the breakthrough happens i am encouraging and wanting you to believe that don't go by your human connections those are all of nothing with human connections influence your own power okay or smartness are, are never enough but we need to rely on the promise of a god of a master of a father okay many a times what happens is we go by our own understanding we go by our own feelings and we say no this is so grumble we, we 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 cry about the circumstance we cry about our problems at home as believers we have been doing it we didn't have to wait for such a big thing to happen around us but even as you look back and flash back there have been areas of a life where you're bearing your cross in your home in your families and that cross has gone now deeper you had those challenges but with that you have gone now much deeper with the current situation and the surrounding of the of the virus that's created such a, a great havoc around us okay so from from that little that you were in the uh, from the from the uh, from the pitch black you have gone into deeper black okay the deeper darkness that is like a seed dying when you put it initially in the ground it just gone a shallow ground but when it goes deeper in the roots come out and there is a breakthrough happening and there's a resurrection takes place same way jesus died okay but he was buried when he went to the depth of darkness he took over death he conquered death he came out conquered okay and in the same way i'm believing that the wisdom that we carry of the world or the people around is not important people wisdom is of no use today all the wealth and the fame of people are of no use people may have talked a lot of things but let me tell you there is no other way for salvation but only way for salvation is through jesus for those of us who know it already know it let's work up and see to it that we get ready to move from the next level we may be going through a dark phase right now we may be in a darker phase than what we were before but let me tell you there is a way out god is leading us okay everyone has a problem with the cross whether believer or unbeliever there are people who don't like the cross people who hate us people who talk against us people who make fun about us or who mock at you and who who put you to shame but let me tell you right now is a time and a season when nobody will come against you because everybody is seeking for an answer this is a time to be bold this is a time to to proclaim the gospel this is a time to tell the world why jesus came into this world tell them your faith do we don't have to force people but it's our duty to share when you share and bring it known to the world people will get a chance to know who jesus is who he is that he is the son of the most high god who took down this human form and lived a normal life for you and me and lived a pure life a holy life and ultimately became a great sacrifice on our behalf and for the sins of the world and that anybody who accepts him and makes him his lord and savior salvation will come to him and that will give him new life a new hope and that we can be assured of eternity and that god forbid something happens we know our home is where a home is this home is temporal but our real home is heaven so we are going for that okay so let's get prepared church let's stop trying to use our human connections our human smartness and our human power and connections and money all that has come to nothing today there is only one power that can take us through is to trust on the cross to know that jesus took it all on the cross on your behalf and my behalf on this good friday morning we need to trust him more to know that jesus i know if you took it so much on our behalf how much more i can take it or you can take it we can take it church come on what we are going through god will give us the strength he will not give us more than what we can bear he will only give us what we can take and he leads us and he knows us he understands us he being the son of god could take it all you know they say scientists say the amount of the torture death that he had the horrific death that he went through the stripes that he took on our behalf some of you have never seen so on special on behalf of the ones who are watching us online and who are uh, looking at this uh, uh, this uh, recording i just want to tell you that jesus is the way the truth and the life just watch that movie jesus there's a, it's a free download in this times where you're stuck at home watch the story of jesus just search for jesus a free movie you'll get to watch about his life and the what he went through and the amount of death they say that the, what the movie depict, uh, depicted is not the reality his reality was much 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 more that he took it all the stripes the hitting the spitting and the pain the torture and being hung on that cross oh 
it is painful let me talk he did as the son of god he did it for you and me he did it for anybody who's ready to say jesus i am ready to believe in you i want you to in my life just that simple thing saying lord i am a sinner come into my life forgive me it will change your life just understand if you watch that movie you know more about the life of jesus if nothing get hold of the scriptures get hold of the bible you know more about the story of jesus how he changed lives and that in spite of being the son of god he humbled himself to the point to the point of death itself and took a horrific death so that you and i could be set free that we could experience salvation god forbid something happens to any one of us we know that our home is in eternity it's nowhere else okay so and uh, let me tell you that what i was sharing is the point which i have to share in my third point actually is friday means the beginning of change okay so if you want to understand we all as believers have a who have a relationship with jesus know that the day we accepted jesus as a best friend the day we accepted jesus as the lord and savior the day we accepted jesus as the son of god who died for my sins and we welcomed him into our lives in a simple prayer our lives change that changes our life forever i am promising that this good friday will be a turning point for some of you that this friday means the beginning of change for you for your future even if you are a believer and you have not been living a life that is up to his standards and up to the way that god wants you to you can always repent and rededicate your life let this good friday be the turning point let this good friday be that li- a time where things change for you in a new dimension a new level okay one you have been to the cross once you have been to the cross everything changes everything changes once you come to the cross everything changes some of you who have accepted the lord know that particular day when you came and you repented of your sins and said jesus i want you in my life you know that precious moment in your life how everything changed so once you accept jesus as your savior your best friend your life changes forever there's a transformation that takes place and you start feeling a difference in your life you see the power of god moving in your life if nothing has changed maybe we need to go back to the cross again some of us have been crum- uh, complaining and grumbling and murmuring oh no this that and you're not happy about your own lives and you're not happy about your spouse you're not happy about your loved one you're not happy about your children and you're complaining and talking and oh this is not happening that is not happening i would say it's time for us to go run back to the cross and ask the lord to just have a self check done that his mercy comes back his forgiveness come back to our life and we can experience salvation we can experience pardon we can experience forgiveness so that we can know him in the real way those who have come running to the cross experience a peace that passes understanding experience a hope that promises of eternity experiences a supernatural ability to have a faith that knows that there is no room for fear i'm telling you we tend to even after knowing him we tend to sometimes go off track But let me tell you, our heavenly dad, he always watches us. He loves us. He cares for us. But he keeps giving us opportunity and chance to come back to him. This Good Friday morning, if you have a certain area in your life, a compromise, or you have been going a double standard or living a double standard, going on a different track, my request to you is to come back to the cross, to understand of the great significance of the death of Jesus on the cross. that he it was not ordinary it was extraordinary it was for you and me because he loved us he wants to see us having the best he wants us to see the best of everything in our lives he wants to see us blessed beyond our understanding and imagination he wants to see us filled to the overflow with enough and more to spare my friends my desire is that none of us lose our hope of eternity that we we have to keep running back to the cross we don't have to wait for a good friday to go back to the cross every time we do something which is not right in the or pleasing to the lord it's time that we when we partake of the communion especially as a church when we have been partaking of the communion every morning and evening some of us doing twice a day some of us doing once a day but every time before you come of it don't do it like a ritual don't do it just like you are having a juice and a and a piece of bread don't do it with reverence do it with meaning understand what that signifies it signifies the shed blood of jesus which is more than enough to forgive you of your sins wash you of your sin every sin that you may have done knowingly or unknowingly from childhood to day the sin has uh, that 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 juice that blood which is an element which signifies the shed blood of jesus has the power to pardon our sin and to make us complete to make us whole to make us righteous that bread has the power 
to set you free from your sickness, your pain, because he took all the stripes and his broken body, and which which signifies that element signifies the broken body has the power to give you new life. Okay, and all and we do this. The Bible of God says, do this as often as you can. On this Good Friday, you must be wondering why we're not having Holy Communion. We don't need it because we are talking all about his crucifixion. We are talking all about his death and his resurrection. Okay? And so we don't need those elements to remind us of his love. Good Friday itself means his love. That's why it's called a Good Friday because Jesus took it all on him so that it became good for us. So that we can experience salvation. And by the way, it's not only a good Friday. You can take it a good Saturday, a good Sunday, a good Monday, a good Tuesday, a good Wednesday, a good Thursday. Every day can be good for you once you know Jesus in your life. Because what he did for you and me is more than enough. So all those of you who are discouraged this morning, all those of you are feeling what's going to happen of my tomorrow, let me tell you, there is hope. Because Jesus has given us a hope. If nothing changes, has changed in our life for some of us, it's time for us to run back to the cross. I said that earlier and I want to re-emphasize that. For some of us, we feel no, nothing is happening. It's not that person to change or this one to change or that one to change or society has to change or the world has to change. No, I believe it's time for us to change. Us to run back to the cross to say, Lord, help me where I need help. So that when we change, the world around us changes too. Okay, it was the road, the same road that Jesus went through. The same road is for you and me. He had to go. He, had, he lived a normal human life and then he went through it. He took it. He took the same road to the cross. You and I also need to have the same road to the cross. Okay, We have no other choice, but we have to go to use the same road to walk to the cross. We all have to endure the same pain. We all have to go through the same waiting period. We all have to go through the same agony. If you look at the journey of Jesus to the cross, okay, it was not an easy one. It's filled with all kinds of challenges. All kinds of rough, read the word or watch the movie, you know the, what I'm talking about, what the highlighting of the thing is. It was not an easy, easy journey for him to go to the cross. To the extent that even he went in, uh, and you see in, uh, I think in uh, Matthew 27 verse 46, it says, Why have you forsaken me? We just read it, I think, a little earlier. It says, Why have you forsaken me? He's questioning, Why have you forsaken me? But the very next minute, he says, into your hand, I commit my spirit. Very next verse, he says, into your hand, I commit my spirit. Do you know the significance of this? He speaks in one moment, just like you and I would think in moments, Lord, where are you? I can't see you. Lord, why have you forsaken? Why am I alone in this? How many of you have gone through the situations in life where you felt, where is God in all this? Let me tell you, right now, what's happening around us is also frightening and quite scary. And some of us may be having that fear factor hitting you. I don't want you to have fear, but I want you to have faith. And I know we may question sometimes, where is God in all this? You may question, like even Jesus asked, why have you forsaken me? He's asking, Heavenly Daddy, why have you forsaken me? He knew it that he had to go through it, but he also felt that pain and the agony. And I'm telling you, we also feel a similar kind of a feeling. But the very next minute, he trusted God and he committed his spirit to him. I'm telling you, church, many a times we don't understand life situations and challenges. But those are the times that we need to commit it to the Lord and to just to be at ease. Just like Jesus committed his spirit to the Father's hand and he was at ease. And what happened? It soon everything over. The devil felt it's finished. And as Jesus said, it's finished. It did seem like everything is finished. No. On the third day, and that is coming Easter Sunday, he rose up again. It is just the third day. The Friday will lead you to Sunday, Easter Sunday, where he will come back. He'll come back. He'll rise again. So church, I don't want you to be discouraged. I don't want you to be feeling low. I want you to demonstrate your faith. I want you to put faith into action, not fear into action. Let faith arise. Hope is there. If Jesus also was feeling all forsaken at that moment, but in his last breath, as he was about to be finished, he said, into your hands I commit my spirit. In the same way, church, if you're feeling like giving up, you're feeling like all down, you're feeling all frightened, wherever you're watching this, I want to encourage you to allow your faith to arise. Don't let fear grip you. But I know in the midst of the fear, let your faith arise and say, Lord, I'm trusting you. And I am committing to you my spirit, my future, my tomorrow. And I'm believing, Lord, my coming Sunday is my resurrection Sunday. The coming day ahead, I'm going to see your newness. I'm going to see your power. I'm going to see your light. I'm going to see hope. Lord, this dark moments, I'm going to come out of it. 
I'm going to come out of the grave. I'm going to come out of this dead like situation. I'm come out of this situation that's around me because you have said after Friday there is Sunday. But I'm going to believe that. Jesus showed through this wonderful declaration how to trust in the Father. And I'm telling you church, you and I have maybe situations which are death like situations. Even Jesus had death on his hand at that time hanging on the cross. Death was surrounding him, surrounding him. And he felt he was forsaken. Maybe we have situations which are death like situations. But in the midst of the situation, we don't have to give up our hope. But we need to have faith to trust in God and to know that he knows the best because he's the author and finisher of our lives. And for every child of God who belongs to God, you know, when you welcome Jesus into your life as a Lord and Savior, you are a son of the Most High God. You have the same equal rights as Jesus. So you and I can be assured of this. God forbid something happens. We have a home in eternity. We have hope in eternity. We have a palace in eternity. And if you have been reaching out and sharing this love to the world that needs this love, and you have been not using your uh, your human wisdom but godly wisdom to be a bold vessel of glory to shine for his glory to share about him telling the world about jesus and being a, a, a proclaiming his love i can assure you you will have crowns in heaven which you'll wear one day okay so i just want you to be encouraged to know this that there is no circumstance that you cannot overcome there is no challenge that we cannot overcome every situation every storm everything that we go through in life Jesus has made a way out for us. He has promised us that after Friday, there's going to be a Sunday. And Sunday is Easter, where we see the resurrection power. I am telling you, it's going to come to pass. This situation around us, this storm around us, this virus, which has become like a pandemic effect across the globe, killing everything around us, crushing everything around us, making everything go down, no work for people, no salaries coming for many people, and no businesses happening for many people, and uh, uh, no aeroplanes flying, no hotels working, everything coming to a standstill is frightening. But in the midst of it, I want to encourage you, cling on, trust, read the word, meditate on the word, sing songs of praise to the Lord, worship the Lord, Continue to walk with him, talk with him, experience his fullness. And I can promise and I can assure you, we will come out of these dark moments. We may have gone from one level to the more deeper level. But let me tell you, we will come out of this with the resurrection power. Because after Friday, Sunday has to come. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Are you ready to believe church? Are you ready to believe what God is speaking to you? Are you ready to know that God has already made a way out for you? Let's pray this morning. And believe God that this word has come in and is, is, it will remain with you. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for ministering to us, for encouraging us, Lord. Lord, this is the day that you have made and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Because, Lord, you sent your only begotten son to die for our sins. But even as we remember your great sacrifice by, by releasing your only begotten son to die for our sins, Lord, we are so blessed, Lord. Even as we heard the word and Lord, we talked about the cross, Lord. Jesus took it all. But Lord, after Friday, Sunday always came. Lord, there is always resurrection after a time of your trial and testing. And even if we have to face death, Lord, we know there is hope in eternity. And Lord, at this time, we want that you will lead us and guide us and help us to know you more. Or for even for the ones who know you, but Lord, who have gone astray, help us to come back running to the cross. Lord, because each time we come to the cross, we get a chance to put our lives in order and Lord, to walk in that way that you want us to. Lord, bless us, Lord. Lead us, Lord. Guide us, Lord. And Lord, help us to, to continue to move and have a being knowing, Lord, that there is a way out of this situation. That the, the enemy may have tried to rob, to kill, to destroy, but Lord, you have promised us of, of eternity. You have promised us of hope. You have promised us that anybody who will welcome you into his life, Lord, you will come and reign in him in the power of your spirit. Holy Spirit of God, we pray, Lord, for anybody who's watching this this morning, who wants to make you his best friend. Lord, I encourage you, if you're watching and you want to make Jesus your best friend, just to talk to him because he's there in the power of his spirit. Say, Father in heaven, I want to believe in your son, Jesus. I believe that he died on the cross for my sins. I welcome him into my life. And I believe that every sin that I've done is washed away because of the shed blood of Jesus on the cross. And that I'm born again. I'm a new person. And God forbid something happens to me. I know, Lord, that my home will be in eternity. I'll have salvation coming to me. And Lord, for those who have already known you, if you have failed you, Lord, 
We pray, Lord, that you'll give us that moments where we come back to you, running to your cross and put our lives in order so that we can experience your newness. We can experience your salvation. We can experience your pardon and we can experience victory in our lives. Thank you. We praise you with your glory. In Jesus name we pray. Amen. Hope you're blessed this morning with the word that's come forth. Pastor Sylvia, will you join me? And uh, even as uh, our, we uh, get ready for the Aaronic blessing uh, to be heard from uh, Pastor Sylvia when she closes the meeting, I just want to make a few announcements before that. This evening, today evening, we are not meeting for a Zoom prayer, okay? Because we have already spent time praying together as a corporate family. But we are meeting tomorrow evening, that is Saturday evening, we are meeting at 7.30. And on Sunday is a resurrection day where we're going to have real communion time and we're going to have communion elements ready in our homes and we're going to have a partaking of the communion together and celebrate our Lord's coming back. Okay, because that's a resurrection power and we're going to believe God for a miracle in the midst of this crisis. Are you ready to believe that? Yes, yes, and we're going to see that happen. And I'm, I know we don't have our turkeys and we don't, maybe not even a chicken at home this time. But even if it's a potato that you have, mashed potato or stuffed potato, enjoy whatever is there on the table and let's celebrate this Resurrection Sunday, Easter Sunday, this coming Sunday. Oh, and I like Pastor Sylvia to greet you and to close in prayer. Yeah, church, I hope you're blessed with the worship and the word. God bless Amen. you. Enjoy the rest of the evening, rest of the day with your family members. Amen. And I send you with this ironic blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. Shalom. Have a blessed day and meet you on Resurrection Sunday, Easter Sunday. God bless you. Amen.